2016 is a massive election year in the United States. As a matter of fact, it is a much more exciting and controversial president. Under the, 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 the American right to vote, no voter shall be turned away from the poll, polling station. They can vote. But again, the final repetition of that, did the vote count? And the answer is no, if they were not qualified to vote. So this is one part, and I guess we will be right back. Welcome back. Now we are going to talk about the mechanics of voting, how to use the machines. I can tell you something. As a journalist, I was one of the journalists who were very critical of the New York City Board of Elections. Until one day I was asked if I can volunteer some time, and I decided to volunteer. And since then, I do work part-time at election time at the Board of Election. And as, as, a, as I consider it a privilege and a right because now I understand the intricacies that go into an election. It is it's not really easy. In the Caribbean, on election day, it's just one. We vote for a candidate. That's it. You know, we use the Westminster type system. So you go, you vote for the candidate you love, and then that's it. Here in the United States, on election day, you, there are much more than one person you are voting for because there are different offices. So this is why everything is compiled into the general election in the first Tuesday of every November. So for example, every four years, there is a presidential election. So every four years, more people go to vote than the other three years because some people only vote in the presidential election. So they will only vote four years. Whereas some people do not like to do that. So this is why every four years is chaos because so many people are voting because this just happened to be a presidential year. But what confuses all these people is this, because remember they did not vote for three years. They may forget a lot of stuff. In that general election, you are voting for the president, the next president of the United States, fine. But you're also voting for your congressperson you're also voting for your city council person. You're also voting for your New York State Senate. You may be also voting for your local judge. You may be also voting for your, your local committee man. Or you may even be voting, to be very honest with you, to be the dark catcher of your, your little borough or your little district. And all that is on election day. So some, So the nice thing on election day, some people will just go vote and they, and they leave, but they did not vote all the other candidates, but at least they voted for one person. Okay, but New York State, they have machines now that when you, this is where the scanners are nice. So let us say in this year's election, you go, you vote, let us say for the, for the presidency, but there is also a senator, and you didn't vote for the senator or you didn't vote for the councilman or you didn't vote for the district council member running. When you put in your vote, the scanner will tell you, oops, you voted for one party, and that's all right, you voted for one candidate. Do you want to vote for the other people running for different offices? If you say no, they say thank you, your vote counted for the person you vote for. But it reminds you that there are other people running for other positions that you can run for, you can vote for. And then there's what you call, there are other issues too, which are bonds. So let us say if you want the transit authority, let us say in, in, in one of the, 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 the cities in New York State, they want to raise, let us say $500 million and they cannot get the legislature 
to accept it. So the governor, the legislator, somebody, they put it on the ballot. So therefore, the people will vote whether they want the 500 million. So in this presidential year, or in any presidential year, as a matter of fact, you will be voting for about 10, 15 persons and items. But you, again, you are not obligated to vote for all 10, 15 persons. You could just vote for the, the office, the, the person you are interested in to hold that office. So that, that is, that is a, a particular um, strategy that a lot of other people are not aware of. Then, when it comes now to the census, and you may ask yourself, what does the census have to do with elections in the United States? And my friends, when the census come around, you, you need to fill it out and do the census because it has a bearing on the election. So for example, let us be specific. You go to the Haitian community, in the Haitian community, let us say in Queens and Brooklyn, where there is a heavy, 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 strong Haitian community. 90% of the people come in to vote, they do not understand English. Or let us leave the Haitian community and let us go to the Russian community in Brighton Beach. In, we are talking of New York City, Brighton Beach, Coney Island, those places. And there are thousands of Russians come to vote, they're American citizens, but they cannot, they, they need a translator and there's nobody to translate for them. In the meantime, in the Haitian community of Flatbush, there are, let us say, I'm just exaggerating, there are 100 Chinese citizens who are voters. And there is a Chinese translator there. And the guy is sleeping, the guy or the lady is sleeping all day because there is no Chinese came to vote. And you are asking yourself, well, this is racism. This is not right. Why Flatbush?